Johnny Cage. Talk about talent. Meet Hollywood's newest star. Easily one of the strongest and popular characters in the game right now. Proven by recent tournaments, leaderboards, and pro players using him. And it's understandable. He has great strings that leaves him plus, can become a monster once paired out with Cyrax, and his star power opens up many new possibilities for big damaging combos. So today, I spent 7 days learning Johnny Cage to see if he's broken, like people say, and belongs in the top 3. Or if I'm just bad at the game. I will be playing Combat League to see if I can climb up the ranks to Elder God. Knowing myself, I doubt it. But I like a good challenge. Before I begin my journey, here are some goals that I need to complete by the end of this video. Highlight. Right from the beginning, there is no better way to learn a character than to simply jump into training mode and play with their buttons. One of the most difficult things about being a Mortal Kombat fan is how much their move list changes from one game to another. In Mortal Kombat 11, Johnny Cage was a footsie character, meaning that some of his strings had pushback, which then allowed him to be safe on block, returning him to neutral. The goal then is to make sure your opponent with their attack and follow up. That is what I'm used to. But in Mortal Kombat 1, that is not the case anymore. He has turned to a complete rushdown character, which is even better for me and is my favorite playstyle. But it would require me to learn his moves from scratch. Luckily, he seems to be straightforward and it didn't take me long to learn his bread and butter combos. Okay, now that we got his bread and butter's combos down, next let's take a look at his pressure game, because combos are not the only thing that we need. Luckily, Johnny Cage is equipped with pretty great plus frames. First, his standing 1 and standing 2 are plus 4 on block. His rough house is plus 3 on block. His contract kick is plus 7 on block. Breaking backhand is plus 3. Lastly, Cage Nato is plus 15 on block. Everything else is negative or at least him safe on block. Makes sense because he is a rushdown character. He is meant to keep his turn. However, we need to know in what sequences we can use these plus frames because believe it or not, there are ways to punish these attacks. For example, some of these you can just armor through and also the fact that many starts as a high, meaning that they can just mash a down poke in between. All we need now is to select the right cameo before we can give online matches a try. The hardest part about selecting a cameo is finding out which one is the best fit for you. Lots of people are going to be saying Cyrax, but I kinda like going off meta, so I'll be picking Sector instead. Just something about him just clicked for me. Mainly because with Sector, that teleporting punch really catches people off guard from afar. That and the missile does give me a great way to buy me time to get in before or even after my combos. So let's give him a try. Showtime! Okay, there's one weakness I noticed right away when I looked at my earlier matches, and that is, I have no clue how to use Sector. I don't want to do this no more. Get down, Mr. President! They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. What's it gonna take for you to respect me? Okay, so let's do something about Sector. Cameo is a big factor when it comes to the game's mechanic after all. So what can we do with Sector? Or the better question would be, what does Sector bring to the table? Especially when paired up with Johnny Cage. One thing I realized after spending hours practicing is that Sector really is meant for set play. For example, 
After your nut punch special move, you can call Sector's missile to pressure them while they get back up. As Johnny Cage, this allows you to continue your offense and use your plus frame to still take back your turn, or try out your meaties like forward 4 as they get back up. But the real best part about Sector is that he can break opponent's armor so that you can punish your opponent's punish instead. This is the main reason why you want to use Sector, to punish their armor punishes and cause your opponent to hesitate the next time they wake up. Another thing you can do with Sector is try to steal turns with Missile. But the timing can be very tricky because it puts Sector in right in front of your faces so he can be interrupted. But doing it this way can open up opponents when they can take back their turn. A couple of moves you can use to start out with Missile setup is Leg Banged Redemption, which is the best move to use since it has longer active frames and is safe on block. The next one you can use is your rough house. Go into missile and then continue your pressure with 214 and rising star. This can be safe because of the missile, but if it lands then you can try to convert it into a combo. Now the most exciting part for using missile is to extend your star power hype combos. But the timing is very strict and requires at least 2 bars for the nut punch restand. But depending on the starter it will change the timing and damage. So here's what I came up with after long practice. What I love about Missile is that it has a lot of potential for setups and for extending combos, but here's what I learned after accidentally landing it. You can use it for extra damage for any of your combos, if you time it correctly. Mastering this now allows me to see many great opportunities finishing the opponent off. The only thing is that if I miss the Shadow Kick, I will be in recovery and that could allow the opponent to punish me at the wrong time. I am sure there is more to explore, but for now let us move on to Telepunch. Telepunch is very underrated, but I think it has a little bit more potential than it seems to be. In general, this can be applied to some of your combos. For example, at full screen, you can follow it up with Shadow Kick for 12%. Now this move can be used to punish airborne opponents who likes to jump a lot. Especially for characters like Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Kung Lao, Nitara, and Omni-Man who are always in the air. Once confirmed at mid-range, it's best to follow it up with Footless to guarantee more time to confirm the combo. Another thing you could do with Telepunch is use it with Standing 1-1 into Telepunch for an easy hit confirm combo for a decent amount of damage. The second one is after Rising Star for a 38 or 39% damage which is pretty good. 212 works for it too. The last thing you could do with Sector is to use Flamethrower to re-stand the opponent. This will prevent them from waking up and will allow you to keep your offensive pressure going. The potential to continue my pressure on the corner is massive for Johnny Cage. Now that we know what to do with Sector, I feel comfortable jumping back into online matches and you're about to lose yours. On day 3, it was time to jump back into Combat League. Let me tell you, the first few matches, we did pretty good. Got him.
Ooh! Ah! Ah! My god, he had breaker. Woohoo! Ooh, hell yeah, boy! Let's go! Oh, nice! Ooh! I guessed right! Let's go! Oh yeah! Hell yeah! I learned early on that you cannot get too comfortable because your opponent will take advantage of that. Oh shit! Nice! Oh, what is this? What is this? What is this sorcery? What the? What? Damn! Alright! 40%! Staggering him! Oh, you messed up! Oh, no, no, no! no. I respect it. The rest of the day we did pretty well. We won most than we lost, but I have to say Johnny Cage is one of the most fun characters in this game simply because you can play very aggressively. But the biggest misconception everyone in the community has about this character is that you can turn your brain off and just win games. That simply isn't true. Everyone knows how to play against Johnny Cage by now, and his mix-up game is not that strong. You can avoid both of them by simply fuzzy guarding. Which makes you think, if he does not have his plus frames, what does he really have? Some of these matches, I wasn't even able to land one combo. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna have to grab a lot because he's like avoiding all my mix ups, dude. Oh shit. <laughs> this this makes it boring when I ha can't use anything else. God. Oh fuck, okay. Oh, okay. He likes the challenge. few seconds oh what the and he can throw the overhead no matter how many times dude oh fuck fuck out of here now I have to throw What the fuck? He fuzzy guards it. What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh my god, dude. Really? Alright. When you think about it, you can say that the whole reason for having cameos in Mortal Kombat 1 is so that you can cover your character's weakness. But I'm a character loyalist, and I refuse to pick up characters like Kano, Cyrax, Kung Lao, and Striker, because it isn't fun being cheap. They do have the mix-ups with Punish, 
an easy combo extension I'm looking for, but I just want to get by without them. But compared to other Johnny Cage players, I might be setting myself back. Because Sector just does not bring enough to really change the game. He really does need a buff. Hello, sexy. It was at this point where I had to figure out other ways to open the players up. So I looked up tournaments and pro players gameplay to see what they do differently and see if they have this issue as well. A new thing I learned is that I had to change my perspective on what Johnny player style is really. You don't have to just rely on his plus frames, but also utilize his mobility. His walk speed and dash is one of the best in the game. Seems minor, but in situations where players are exchanging pokes, it makes a huge difference. Sometimes you have to create your own whiff punish opportunities and bait them in. For example, pokes into mind games. Knowing this, I went ahead and tested it out online to see if it worked. With punish opportunity. Let's go. All right. There you go. Hell yeah. Baby, let's go! Hell yeah, we're punished, bro! Finally! Another thing I had to utilize more is his parry. That in itself is a mind game. They either try to take their turn and get punished or stay still and allow me to continue my pressure. It's a good way to open players up and sometimes I felt bad abusing it. What? What? Oh my god bro. Big opening! Let's go, Johnny K! This person was hesitating badly! These tactics do have their drawbacks though. It does depend on the matchups. Some pokes from other characters on the roster have long reach, so I will get punished trying to backdash. 
and parry leaves me open to low attacks, so characters like Raiden and Smoke that have a quick mix-up tool won't work with them at all. Which is fine. I'm glad that I'm learning a new skill that could level me up. Ready for my close-up. You're probably wondering by now why I haven't used star power yet in any of my matches. Well, here's the thing. If you currently play Mortal Kombat 1, then you certainly know that these matches can get hectic pretty quickly. And against some matchups, you lose half of your life at the start of the round. If you have the right cameo equipped, then all they need is two touches for you to win. Sometimes there isn't time to charge the height meter, especially if they have projectiles or full screen control. The biggest issue with Johnny Cage height meter combos is that it can be very expensive and costly choice. And what I mean by this is that you either choose to save two bars to quickly get breaker or use two of them for your star power combos. Most of the time I go with the safer choice and use it for breaker. Also the fact that in high rank, I can't open players up consistently. But for the sake of this challenge, I'm going to use all my resources for this specific combo. It doesn't matter if I win or not. So let's see if it's possible to do it without messing up. That was fail. Alright, alright. Now we got star power. Let's see if we can do it now. Ah, oh, what the hell? He has no breakers. Let's go. Ooh, let's go! Oh! But we didn't have the second sector um, ability. Ooh, I knew I was gonna get it. Now we got it! Oh! Alright, let him hit me. Let me build my meter. Alright, now we have it. Nice! Oh! I messed up! Oh, brother! This guy stinks! I'll be honest. Based on what you saw, yes, I'm not the best at star power combos. It just takes way too much resources and the windows for connecting it is small making it challenging to not mess up. Another issue I saw with this is that most of the opportunities I had landing this was at the end of the round and the game does not let me finish my combo. Alright, alright, alright. We got it, we got it. Oh my god, why did the uppercuts? At that range, dude. Oh, the, there you go. Oh my god, we were gonna finish it. God damn it, the game should let me finish my combo, bro. What? There you go. I'm just missing the shadow kicks. So you see that was frustrating. And not only that, if I didn't make sure my opponent used their breaker right before, because this combo is pretty long, they built just enough meter for a breaker at the end of my combo. So I had that happen many times. Oh my god, you have to break it, dude. Oh no! You, why did you break it? Ah, the combo was too long, dude. However, 
Don't get upset, I did manage to get some successful attempts which made me really happy. Showtime! That's a wrap. So, what are my thoughts after playing a week with Johnny Cage? Scratch that. Actually, what are my thoughts after 7 months with Johnny Cage? Yes, I still play him to this day even with Sector. Like I said, I'm a character loyalist, I only know how to play Johnny Cage. I do still play the game from time to time, so here are my stats after all this time. Yeah, it's about even wins and losses. I do play for fun, so stats doesn't really matter to me. But to recap, Johnny Cage is one of the strongest characters in the game, but he is in the borderline of being normalized. He did receive a few nerfs as of now, like 950 health, parry damage scaling, nut punch costing 2 bars but in the beta was 1, his standing 1-1 one, one is now plus 1 instead of plus 3, and any more nerfs will be a little too much in my opinion. His major weaknesses are long range pokes and full screen control, so like characters like Ashra for example could keep him from going in. Zoning like Sindel, or anyone who uses Kung Lao as a pair, with Serena too, could struggle. Since everyone uses a cameo like Kung Lao, then you can see the issue. I actually had to adapt and use Sub-Zero as a cameo to help neutralize that zoning. I also use other cameos to try out why everyone uses Striker and Kung Lao, and I can see why. They are super strong, and I had many more ways to open players up. You have more mix options, and more ways to force that mind game. But I still refuse to use them because I don't want to be carried by cameos. Overall, Johnny Cage plays the way I expected him to. Fun, flashy, and stylish, and straightforward. Reminds me of the MKX days. I just wish he had his projectiles back and his green energy power. And in general, Cameo is fun at times, but just makes the game more annoying. The first week, it was nothing but Cyrax and Serena. I still prefer the 1v1 in fighting games, because the balance of this game is a serious issue now, but Johnny Cage is still strong no doubt. Against brand new players, you can abuse the hell out of them. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about Johnny Cage currently. I still have a lot to improve on, but I know I will commit to playing him since he's my favorite character in the whole franchise. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching me master this character. If you guys did, give this video a like and subscribe will be appreciated. I'm not sure who I'll be picking next, so suggest that in the comments down below. With that, I hope you guys have a good day.